What is going on with Bitcoin? Bitcoin is stuck in a very tight range right now. We'll take a look at the charts and crypto prices here in a second. But this is a pivotal, pivotal month for Bitcoin. Uh, this is a big week. We have the FOMC uh, meeting notes coming out from the last Federal Reserve Board meeting. So it'll be interesting to see what um, was discussed in the meeting in terms of tapering, Fed policy, things like that. Uh, so that's going to be out uh, Wednesday of this week. So we will know what the Fed is really talking about if they're talking about tapering, if they're talking about raising interest rates. Um, that is the kind of stuff that moves markets. So we shall see. Um, looking at the cryptocurrency markets, uh, total market cap right now in the 1.4 billion range or trillion range. It's been up and down between 1.4 and 1.2 trillion, depending on where things are uh, in the markets right now. And it's really interesting, like I said, if you um, kind of start tracking um, up days and down days and which coins are up and which coins are down, it's really interesting how one day uh, most everything is green, the next day most everything is red. Um, today we have a little bit of a split here, uh, nothing up significantly or down significantly. Um, but uh, anyways, just something to watch out for. Just kind of keep an eye on. You might find some little plays in here if you're doing some day trading. Internet computers had some pretty good ranges. I'm not, you know, at all talking about that in terms of an investment, but just tr uh, purely speculative trading ranges. Um, internet computers have been kind of all over the map. This is one that started out really up and then sold off to almost nothing. And what I like to do is um, I like to go look at these coins that are trading in different broad ranges and even Ethereum. I talked about Ethereum a few weeks ago and how you could potentially make some bigger moves in Ethereum um, from a trading standpoint. And I think it was down as much as 1700 the other day and it's gone up as high as I think 2300 if we look at some ranges. So what I like to do is go in here, just kind of look at where they're ranging high and low on the day, 21 to 2300 on the day. You can kind of see everything. If you look at every coin, this chart looks like almost every altcoin, um, especially post uh, pandemic. But if you look at the last year, pretty much everything was up way up um, in the last year, especially following the March pandemic and the liquidity coming into the markets and the institutional investors getting more involved in the markets and using the altcoin space um, as a liquidity pool to fund ETH and Bitcoin purchases. So if you look at the last year on most of the uh, altcoins and Bitcoin, you'll see that you know we had this huge spike in the last year, but you can look at the last three months and kind of look at the range over the last three months where we had a low <clears throat> of around $1,700, $1,800 was our low, maybe $1,900, and we had a high of $4,100. But since then, since it's dropped down um, to that $1,900 low, I think we've come down a little bit. Yeah, that $1,700, $1,800 range. And since then, we've been back to about $2,200. So $1,700 to $2,200. And that's really been in the last month, I think, that we've seen that. That's a pretty good trading range right there for people looking to trade um, stuff. Yeah, we dropped down to about $1,700 June 22nd. Here we are in July, back up to $2,300. That's been our highest point since then. Um, and we'll likely see those. 15 to $1,700 ranges again, because that's kind of what we're doing right now. And as a market as a whole is just kind of ranging. So just something to watch out for, something uh, fun to look at. I don't promote any projects, any coins, anything like that. To me, they're just purely speculative trades. It's venture capital. Some of the projects are good. Some have real world use. Ethereum obviously um, has a lot um, of of use um, and relevance in the world. A lot going on with that, probably not going anywhere. There's been a lot of talk about Cardano, whether it's legit or not, whether they're actually going to finally um, get this thing going or not. Um, Polygon, Matic. So there's a lot of stuff out there that has actual real world use. But for me, again, they're all just, you know, really interesting trades on a weekly, daily, weekly, monthly kind of a basis. Um, so that's something there. So watch out for the Fed minutes this week and how it moves the markets and what it's going to do for Bitcoin. So let's take a look at the chart and something fun. Um, I don't use this for any kind of a, never really looked at the moon phases for anything other than fishing. I'm a big fisherman and um, the moon phases definitely affect the tides, which definitely affect the fishes uh, and animal behavior. Um, and on the lower 
side here, we have full moons. And on the top side, we have new moons. Uh, new moons are dark, full moons are white. Uh, when you log into TradingView and look at the moon phases, it's usually the other way around. But let's um, blow this up and look at this in large scale here. And what's really interesting about this is they've kind of been, you know, especially for the overall larger range that we've been in here, you can see a new moon usually um, usually uh, has a dip and a full moon, you know, is kind of an uptrend. So we have a new moon drop, full moon uptrend, new moon, that one's a little bit behind the peak, but it's still dropped afterwards. Um, then we're straight up from there with a the new moon. We had another drop straight up. So, I mean, you're talking seven out of eight have been on it. So let's look at this range here lately where we've been really kind of sideways. And um, <clears throat> next couple of weeks, you know, this week, like I said, the Fed minutes are coming out that could affect markets. Bitcoin follows, uh, follows the markets in terms of liquidity. It's a risk on trade. So it's going to track just like the markets. It's not going to track with gold. Um, when the dollar is strong, Bitcoin's down. Uh, gold should be the same way, but gold's been kind of all over the map lately. Um, so Bitcoin is more of your risk on trade. So if you follow the dollar, you'll be able to peg Bitcoin moves. But anyways, um, what's interesting here is if you look at just the last couple of months, we had this full moon, market shoots up a little bit, new moon, it drops. That's our big drop there. We get that full moon, it kind of bounces up a little bit right here if you blow this up. And then it drops a little bit, bounces up. So overall from this um, full moon here, you could say it was an upward trend to the new moon. And then it drops down. We get a full moon, we're back on an upward trend. And guess what? We have a new moon printing on the 15th of July. So keep your eyes peeled for that new moon. What happens to the market during that time frame? The other thing that's interesting around that same time, 17th or 18th is the grayscale unlocking. And if you look at articles on the grayscale unlocking, what that's actually going to do to the markets, some people are saying it could push the market up. Some people are saying it could push the market down. Um, there are some people that borrowed um, against Bitcoin to get into the trust. So they're going to have to go back when it unlocks. They're going to have to actually purchase Bitcoin at spot. And more than likely, they'll just purchase it, sell it to get their money back so that they can get out of their position. So it'll be really interesting to see what that does. Does that put selling pressure on Bitcoin? Does it put buying pressure on Bitcoin or is it just a wash? The interesting thing is we're going to print a new moon about the same time that that grayscale unlocking happens. So the second week of July, that 15th uh, through the 18th range could be very interesting times uh, for Bitcoin to watch out for. So the other big thing is how do you know when it's time to, um, let me get this thing here. How do you know when we're reaching a bottom? That's the big question. And, and here's a couple of things that we've talked about. Are we putting in a bottom here? Is Bitcoin in a bottoming process? And then we can be off again uh, to new highs or are we putting in a high? What's really going on? Was 65 an anomaly? Will we ever be able to get back there and beyond again? Or is the 40,000 range going to be our ceiling because we haven't come anywhere near it in a while. We've been ranging kind of below it, but we haven't dipped down below really you know, from a closing basis, I guess our low has been in the 31,000 range. We haven't even really closed below 31,000. We've wicked down um, a little bit lower in some of those uh, on some of those days, but we haven't closed below 30,000 yet. We've had a wick down as low as 28,000. With our lowest close to date, it looks like about 31.4. So the real question is. Um, what is ultimately going to be the, the top? What's ultimately going to be the bottom? Is this just a, uh, are we figuring that out now? Or is this just a range and we're just going to trade sideways for months and months and months before a big old move um, is made one way or the other? And nobody really knows the answer to that. Uh, from a technical standpoint, it seems like there's downside. All the charts will tell you, all the technicals would indicate the bull run is over and that we have nothing but sideways and down from here. Um, until something changes, there's fundamental news out there in terms of broad scale adoption that would indicate that Bitcoin should be moving up. But um, the question is, where is up and what is the ultimate end destination? Um, we have stock to flow models that are getting um, blown up. They're not lining up, you know, things like that. Uh, we have the halving coming up. So there's a lot of interesting things out there that could take it one way or the other. Nobody really knows. There's no way to tell. Um, the interesting thing to me is we haven't gotten anywhere 
near that 40,000 level yet um, since the last time we were there back on 15th of June. We closed at 40,500 to 15th of June. We haven't been back anywhere near that $40,000 level. We haven't really been above 35, uh, 35, seven. We haven't closed above 35,000 into that 36 range. Since then, we've down, been down below it. So we've kind of tightened that range. A lot of the technicals um, and technical analysts will tell you that the tighter this range get, the more indicative that is of a bigger move one way or the other. But there's no indication any uh, of any direction except we always say the trend is your friend. We're in a down market, we're in a downtrend. So if you're expecting big moves, then the trend would suggest the big move would be to the downside. Uh, as far as the um, bottoming process, we have this hash ribbon buy, buy indicator that I've talked about. You wanna see a blue signal printed on the hash ribbon buy indicator and it needs to tighten up. This range needs to, bro needs to tighten up uh, to indicate that you're getting close to a bottom for a buy signal. And this is only getting wider. The gap's getting wider. It's not getting closer. You can scale back through the history of the chart and you can kind of look at where you've received these buy signals and what this, uh, what the uh, hash ribbons look like from the time that they start to broaden until they narrow and come back together to, to print that buy signal. And you can see we're in somewhere in this range here where we're, we still haven't bottomed out yet according to the hash ribbon buy indicator. And you can go back and look over the history of Bitcoin in the charts and kind of look at that. You know, again, the moon phases are just something that's fun. I don't ever use this. I, I would never use this in any investment decision. I never have in the past. But moon cycles, there is science out there that shows that it definitely affects human behavior. Um, and, you know, the charts track uh, price action of human behavior. It's humans driving this price action to a degree. It's also market makers that are generating liquidity that are driving the market. Uh, generally, a lot of times the market makers are price agnostic. They're just generating liquidity to trade ranges one way or the other. This range has tightened greatly, which is kind of disincentivizing trading. A lot of people are on vacation. A lot of people are traveling. Volume is down and light. So um, that's neither here nor there right now. This could range like this for months and months. Uh, we just don't know what's going to happen. We can uh, say that some of these patterns like this macro head and shoulders that a lot of people were talking about, um, we have probably invalidated that now um, in terms of an overall um, strategy to look at or indicator to look at. Um, so let's take a look at that here. So we've talked about uh, some people are saying, let's get rid of this moon phase here. That was fun to look at. But some people have um, looked at this range. Some traders are looking at a macro head and shoulders here in that area. But this is kind of invalidating since we're going sideways and nothing is happening there. Other people are saying that this could be a cup and handle situation right here, kind of like that. And uh, where this is your handle, this is your cup. If that's the case, then that would indicate downside. And um, if you put a little circle here and a little circle there and a little something here, then maybe you have some sort of a character. Don't even know what that would be. So um, if you want to have a little fun with the charts, you can always make the charts look however you want to make them look, right? You can draw anything into the charts, read anything into the charts. So I thought that would be fun. So anyways, the whole point of this today was keep an eye on the Fed minutes when they come out and what that does to the markets because Bitcoin is going to follow the markets. If the markets are down, they're not. it's not necessarily following the markets up right now, but it's definitely going to follow the markets down if the markets are down. So keep an eye on that. And then uh, the following week, we have um, the Grayscale Trust unlocking, which could be a non-event. Uh, it could just be a complete wash. We won't know till it happens. Some of that's already been unwinding over the last few weeks. Some of that's um, getting ahead of the trade. You know what they say, buy on the rumor, sell on the news. So we could be seeing some of this price action we saw in the last few weeks where the market moved up and down a little bit. Could have been some of that preparing for the unlocking. Uh, we just don't know because a lot of this stuff is done off the chain, over the counter, and um, a lot of that data is not tracked. So um, we'll just have to keep an eye on that. For me as an investor, one of the things I like to do, I'm an opportunistic investor. I'm not a technical analyst. I'm not a technician. I'm not a chartist. I'm a macro opportunistic investor in a lot of sectors on my YouTube channel. As you see, I talk about real estate. I talk about entrepreneur, entrepreneurship. Um, I talk about equity capital. Um, so I do a number of things from an investment standpoint and stocks and cryptos are just another investment vehicle that I um, 
move liquidity in and out of in between other projects. And for me as a macro investor, I'm comfortable being in cash right now. I, I don't know which way this is going to go. We're in a downtrend. The technicals are showing more downside potential than upside right now. Um, and I'm comfortable. So what I look at is where is a good entry point for me? Well, I'm okay if Bitcoin's going to reach 100,000, 200,000, 300,000, whatever it, it could potentially reach at some point in the next year or so, I'm okay buying at 40,000 because I know we have not closed above 40,000. So if we close above 40,000 um, and we have upward momentum, because it's going to take some time to get there, it's not going to just jump there, although it could. Um, you talk about probabilities and possibilities. So the probability of it just shooting straight up to 40 uh, and closing above and just continuing straight on up would take some serious active buyers in the market out of nowhere to start doing that, which could happen. That's uh, that there is a probability that that could happen, probably that could be computed. Um, would it shoot straight down from here just out of the blue? There's a probability of a, of a computation that could probably show that that could happen. Anything is possible, but what is probable, meaning what is most likely, you have to go with the trend. So I'm okay just sitting here tight right now and jumping back in if it does get above 40 a little bit. I'm totally fine with that because if it goes to 100, 200, 300 beyond, then that's fine with me. Um, and I'm looking at other things anyways, not specifically Bitcoin, because there's more upside in Ethereum, for instance, or some other uh, projects out there than Bitcoin. Even if Bitcoin goes to 300,000 in the next year or two, you can generally get more upside in some other things right now quicker um, in terms of a ROI. Uh, now, if it goes down, then that's a different story. So if it gets down to that 20, 15, $10,000 range, and it goes back up to 100 or 200 or 300 or even 60, then that's a different conversation and a different computation. And I'd be more likely to jump in at that point um, and uh, looking for a two or three or four X return here in a short period of time versus from 40 and beyond, probably less likely that it's going to continue to go up significantly from there. You might hit this high here and retrace from there a little bit. This could be it uh, for a while, uh, or we could be seeing the top right now. So that's how I look at it from an investment standpoint. If it gets above 40, I don't mind waiting uh, for confirmation that it's going to go from there. But right now, I don't see uh, any point in being in the market right now with it going sideways because it's not doing much for you. Now you can get in and out when you're having the, those ranges between 30, 35 or 35 and 40 or 30 and 40. That's a good trading range where you can get in and out. But when it's tight like this between 33 and 34, that's no, that to me, that's not worth messing with. That's not something that you wanna play with because uh, it could just be stuck there for a while and you can't get in, you can't get out. Um, so that's kind of how I look at it from an opportunistic macro investment standpoint. And uh, keep an eye on the events of the week, the events of next week. I'll be bringing you some updates, especially if we have any big changes. And that's all I have for today. I'll see you in the next video.